Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 13th of September 2011. We almost had an M flare. A C9.9 .9 flare, so just 1% more and it would have been an M flare. Close but no cigar. Today is the 17th anniversary of the passage of the first spacecraft over the poles of the sun. So today's trivia question is, what was the name of that spacecraft and how many pictures of the polar regions of the sun did it take? The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday we've had five C flares. The C9.9 .9 flare was from one of the newly numbered regions, region 1295, as we shall see in a minute. But let's take a look at the individual active regions and see what's going on. We have seven officially numbered regions on the disk at the moment, three of which were numbered last night. However, that still leaves five unnumbered regions on the disk. Let's start with region 1287 in the southwest. According to NOAA, the area of this region has dropped by 15% overnight. However, when you compare today's pictures with yesterday's, you see there's been quite a bit of development, particularly in the trailer spots, which are much, much larger. So I think this region has grown, not decayed. Do you agree? Next comes region 1289. That's near disk center in the north. <clears throat> Similarly, according to NOAA, this region has dropped 30% in area over the last 24 hours. However, when you come to look at the region, there looks to be quite a bit of development in this large spot, and some of the trailing spots that seem to have disappeared yesterday seem to have returned. So I think this region has grown, not decayed. However, the small spot to its south has almost gone away, and the new region 1293 to its west uh, seems to have decayed also. So I can only speculate that yesterday they were including these other spots in the total area of the region, and today they've split them up into different regions. That seems the only reasonable explanation. Next we turn to region 1290 in the southwest. Noah shows that this region is stable. However, when I compared yesterday's image with today's, there looks to be more spots today and those spots look somewhat larger. So I think this region has grown. I went looking for region 1291, although Noah claims it is now a spotless plage. Now there are some sunspots in the region, however I think they're too far west to be the original region 1291. So this must be a new region coming up. Next we turn to region 1292 near the northeast limb. Noah again claims that this region has dropped significantly in area. 75%. However, when I look at the images comparing yesterday with today, the region looks as if anything that it's grown. So I'm not sure what's going on here at all. There certainly seems to be more spots there today. It looks like today I'm not going to agree with Noah on anything. Am I being unreasonable in this? Now let's take a look at the newly numbered regions. We've already discussed 1293, so let's move on to 1294, which is in the southeast. It certainly looks as though in the last 24 hours this region has grown quite significantly, so it's worth keeping an eye on. Last but not least, region 1295. This region has moved further onto the disk so we can now see its structure a little better. You can also see two other regions, one to its south which is quite small, and a quite a substantial region to the northeast, which I was surprised was not numbered overnight. And it was the region that produced the C9 flare and I happened to catch a single image of it uh, last night. Uh, this is a composite image taken with multiple temperatures in the AIA instrument. It produces a rather beautiful picture, don't you think? Lastly, let's take a look at the unnumbered regions where we've covered four of them already. So the only remaining one is the one in the southwest, which is just going over the southwest limb. It's actually quite a substantial region and I think it should have been numbered. Overall, solar activity is relatively low. I hope you will have noticed how the sizes of these regions fluctuate from day to day, sometimes going up, sometimes going down. Now this could represent a genuine change in the region, or just the uncertainty in measuring some of these parameters, or a combination of both. I think this reinforces my skepticism about sunspot number being a good measure of solar activity, as if you can't even determine how many regions there are on the sun, let alone how many spots, it makes determining that parameter very uncertain. Let's try to follow all those changes using the sunspot and magnetic data from the HMI instrument. There's so much going on, you may have to run through this several times. You may want to go into full screen mode to see all the details of the changes, particularly in the magnetic movie at the end. I'm still not going to include the AIA data because there's nothing there to see. The video clips are so short. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see the massive area covered with high temperature plasma from the regions in the northeast. The LASCO chronograph on the SOHO spacecraft shows um, that we're continuing to get coronal mass ejections. I can count at least three major uh, chronal mass ejections in the last 48 hours on these two movies. 
The ACE data shows us that the temperature of the solar wind has hardly changed in the last 24 hours. The solar wind velocity peaked at about 650 kilometers per second and has been steadily declining ever since. So maybe the influence of that uh, coronal hole is beginning to wane. And the density has been jumping around all over the place from well below one proton per cubic centimeter to nearly 10 protons per cubic centimeter. The high energy electron flux reached fairly high levels but then started to decline and very rapidly again. And of course we've had no major flares so there are no proton events to speak of. From the GOES-15 uh, spacecraft we see that the auroral arc is very agitated at the moment. The KP index has been varying between unsettled and minor storm force in the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B5 level. The sunspot number is at 97. The radio sun intensity at 124 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped to 580 kilometers per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter. And geospace conditions remain unsettled. For my 24 hour forecast, I think C flares are still likely. M flares are possible. X flares I think are unlikely. The sunspot number will remain high. Coronal mass ejections will remain likely. The solar wind speed should edge lower. Uh, but the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very low. From the composite coronal image, we see that we have no new major regions due back for at least three or four days. So the answer to our trivia question was Ulysses. And uh, how many pictures did it take of the southern pole of the sun? None. NASA saved a few tens of millions of dollars by taking the cameras off the spacecraft and now of course are going to have to spend several hundreds of millions of dollars to take those photographs which are key to understanding the solar cycle. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.